Merry Christmas, man fam. And happy holidays, everybody. We're here at Disney Springs, ready to check out some of their holiday offerings, like the holiday bar, holiday treats, Christmas trees. So come along, hang out with us on this uh, like, really here. chill holiday adventure. Let's go. First up, we are doing the Disney Springs Christmas Tree Stroll. There are over 20 themed trees all around Disney Springs. They used to all be in one place, but now they're scattered about. And there's actually a game you can play where you match the sticker to the location of all of them. And then if you do all of them, you get a prize. It's a button, spoiler alert. Uh, so we're gonna look at some Christmas trees as we read through Disney Springs. At first glance, I thought, wow, this is not an unobtrusive guide to the tree stroll but it has a lot of deals for all the different shops and eating locations here at Disney Springs, which is really kind of cool to see. Yeah, you got Salt and Straw, Planet Hollywood, Paddlefish, Chicken Guy, a lot of the different vendors around here have a deal on here. Look at all the trees. <gasps> There's a Toy Story one, a Black Panther one, a Raya one. We gotta find the trees. So at a glance, it looks like you have to place the sticker at the corresponding location where the tree is on the tree trail. Yeah, so we saw that one, and now let's go look at all those. What's the struggle here? That one's Coco. Yeah, it's, I, I know it's Coco, but which tree is it on the map? Oh, we're trying to puzzle it out. Hold on. You gotta get into the map. Oh. Joey Tribbiani. I know. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go into the map. <laughs> I think it's this one. That seems good to me. <laughs> well, let's add a little twist to this. Each tree, let's rate on one to 10 jingle bells. I like it. I'm giving the cocoa tree 10 jingle bells. 10 jingle bells. Look how cute it is. You've got the Requetame lyrics. You've got the marigolds. You've got the skeletons up at the top. It is a very well themed tree, but I'm gonna give this one a nine. Nine jingle bells. Nine jingle bells for me. I'm giving this holiday season. Aw. Moana tree, what's your rating? Seven jingle bells. I don't like those coconut guys. I was gonna give this one a six. Moana tree, six jingle bells. Guardians of the Galaxy tree, it's a 10 jingle bell for me. 11 jingle bells. 11, you're breaking the scale. There's a baby Groot, I have to. Oh yeah, he's so cute. And a Walkman. Very cool. A Haunted Mansion tree? That's a 10 jingle bell. Why are you giving it a 10 jingle bell? Because Haunted Mansion is wonderful and my favorite attraction. Okay, but I'm going to give it nine jingle bells, and all nine are for that portrait of a fox wearing a, a cape. Well, then it's 11 jingle bells for me. A fox and a cape. Look at the pose. He's like a, he's like a Napoleon fox. Like He's like a, a, a royal fox showing his calves to demonstrate his manliness and power. That's what we should do, show calves to demonstrate power? That's what they power? did in these days. Your calves were like ultimate... Manliness. Calves are the power move? Yeah. Look at them. Oh no, I'm doing the gym now. Phew. Finding four Christmas trees has been really hard work. Worked up a sweat. I think we deserve a break. That tracks. And uh, we're headed into Jock Lindsay's, not hangar, holiday bar. Jock Lindsay's hangar bar is themed after Jock Lindsay, who is Indiana Jones pilot from all the Indiana Jones franchise. And this time of year, it gets a drastic holiday overlay. And to somebody who loves this type of decoration, oh my gosh, I'm taking it all in. In addition to the fun holiday decor all over the hangar bar, they also do a special holiday menu. So you have a little card here from Jock and Reggie. That's his pet snake. And uh, you have a little Christmas card here. There are some apps. There are naughty or nice deviled eggs. I just ordered these, spoiler alert, and I had to tell the cast member I wanted them naughty, which was that uncomfortable, interesting. but you know. Uh, there are some turkey croquettes, venison sliders, and a holiday flatbread. And then there are some holiday libations as well. A Clausmo, a Yule Mule, a Jingle g and a hot chocolate grail flight, which is fun. It's like a boozy hot chocolate flight. And then there is milk and cookies, and you can get just regular milk, or you can get Coquito, which is a um, rum-based 
holiday drink. So fun little mix up on the menu here. And we've ordered some goodies to try. Our holiday bevies are here and they are so cute and themed, especially mine right here. This is the Clausmo. Get it? Like Cosmo, but Clausmo, you get it. It's absolute Cintron Contral, lime juice, cranberry juice, and garnished with a Santa hat, which is made out of a strawberry and a marshmallow. And it's very adorable. And I got the Yule Mule, which I love because it rhymes. And that is made with Bombay Sapphire Gin, ginger beer, cranberry juice, rosemary simple syrup, and on top, a holly sugar leaf. That's adorable. Cheers. I really enjoy the drink because it's very gin forward, which means it's been made and it's quite strong. So, big fan. Can't really taste the cranberry juice. There's just some subtle tartness on the end. What steals the show is the rosemary combining with that ginger beer for a flavor combination that is both classic and very holiday. Cheers. The mushroom. Mushroom. Mushroom? I've had, I've had one sip, but no food today, so. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Um, <laughs> that's actually quite tasty. I was a little worried it was going to be too sweet. You know how I feel about sweet drinks. It's actually more tart than sweet because it's lime and cranberry. Definitely taste that lemon. Can definitely taste the vodka. I think it's super cute. I like a Cosmo every now and again to feel like I want sex in the city, so. I know how you ever, you know how you want to be a Samantha, but you feel like you're actually unfortunately a Carrie? That's my reality. No, you, no, not me. You're a, you're a Samantha? Yeah, for sure. I'm Samantha. Our delicious holiday eats have arrived. First up, these are the naughty or nice deviled eggs, and we went with the naughty variety. And I just don't think whoever named these really thought that through. But they are classic deviled eggs, and the naughty version has spicy honey glazed ham on top. If you were to get the nice version, it would be sweet honey glazed ham. I love deviled eggs. They are one of my favorite eats at my family's big Christmas. Um, people will make literally dozens of them, and they will disappear in like 30 minutes, like six dozen deviled eggs. It's unbelievable. We also picked up Grandma's Revenge Venison Sliders, which the name is hilarious because Grandma got run over by a reindeer. It is made with a venison sausage patty, bacon cranberry jam, watercress, and tomato. I did not realize it was venison sausage. I'm, I'm looking forward to that. And last but not least, we are trying the Bows of Holly flatbread. Bows of Holly? Bows. Deck the halls with bows, bows of, of bows of holly. You got it. Um, it's got black forest ham, French brie cheese, watercress, Granny Smith apples, a pomegranate seeds, and a lemon vinaigrette. A lot of watercress. Yeah, they love the watercress here. Thank you. Well, those are lovely. Those have a nice sweet filling. They definitely got some honey mustard or some mustard in there, some sweet pickle. And I like the piece of ham on top. It's nice, got like that crispy outer, and it's got a little bit of spice. They're definitely not too spicy. I wouldn't be worried if you're heat adverse if you're coming to try these. Really good deviled eggs. I think these are fun. More restaurants to serve deviled eggs is what I'm saying. The venison sausage is packed with flavor. It's spicy. It's got a little bit of a hint of heat to it, not a lot, so don't be worried about it if you are spice averse. What really shines through here is the bacon jam. Wow, that offsets everything, and it makes a really balanced dish. Wow. I don't know how much venison I've eaten in my life, but that is tasty. It's really, I thought it'd be kind of gamey, not at all. It's really tender, full of flavor, a nice little slider. Okay, I didn't think I'd say this. I didn't think anything could beat the deviled eggs, but I think that flatbread does. Uh-huh. Mostly because I can make deviled eggs at home. It's got big pockets of that nice, nutty, creamy brie cheese and salty ham. And then what's great is there's the crisp and tartness of both the pomegranate seed and the apple to break it all up and add a little zest in there. That is lovely. I wasn't trying to feel about the pomegranate seeds, but delicious. Jock Lindsay's is one of my favorite lounges anyway. Their year-round food is great, their year-round drinks are great. Love the theme, and I love that they do this holiday. <sighs> Enjoyed delicious holiday treats, and now we're back on the tree trail. But first, Alan, I have to ask you something. How do you feel about these peanut dogs? 
Well, I just saw them. <laughs> do, do you like them or? It's more than just peanuts. They have other nuts all around me. They have a little farfarella bow. Uh, I. The jury is out. Wow, that is wild. That was just so unexpected. I literally was panning and just saw them. Oh god. I think I hate them. <laughs> I think I really don't like them. Look at the noodle arms. Okay, so that's World of Disney. Yeah. It says it's right here. Uh-huh. Is it this one? Or is it this one? Because paddlefish is okay. right there. Yeah. I think it's this one. Good job. This is very complicated. You know that we are adults who are pretty well educated. I and here we are. I have a degree. And, uh, all right. Um, Nightmare Before Christmas Tree Jingle Bell Ranking. Seven Jingle Bells. I'm going to give it 7.5. The point five is for zero up at the top. Zero is very cute. Mickey and Minnie Tree. Cute, but kind of classic and plain. I give it a six. I give it a seven, but that extra point is for the mini bow as the top of the tree. What a nice topper. This is Toy Story. What are you going to give it? Zero. All right. Zero Let's jingle bells. Oh. Zero okay. jingle bells. Is Toy Story my favorite Pixar film? Yes. Is Buzz Lightyear my favorite Disney character? Yes, he is. Is there Buzz Lightyear represented on this tree? No, there is not. Let's take a closer look if you don't believe me. There's the cat from one of the Toy Story holiday specials. There's the Pixar bomb. There's the aliens. There's a sheriff badge for Woody. There's even Sid Rocket, the villain. And there is nothing, nothing for Buzz Lightyear. Zero stars. I give it a five. Encanto Tree, my rating? Five. Oh wow, that's rude. It's not rude. I, I just it took me a minute to figure out it was in Kanto. Okay. Maybe a lot closer. Now I'm here. I love it. It's beautiful. But I don't want to talk about your rating. I'm gonna give it a seven. That landed so well. I'm gonna give it. A, I'm giving it a seven. I agree. It took me way too long to realize it was in Kanto. Like from far away, you have no idea up until you see the doors. But I like the doors. I think they're a nice touch. I like that the candles up at the top. And I just love Encanto, so You're I'm giving it. Shame I'm me. giving bonus points because I like Encanto. You, I love Encanto. Seems like you hate Encanto. It seems like Alan hates Encanto. What I'm hearing is that Alan hates Encanto. I am being rating shamed. I think Alan doesn't care for the message of family, and and that you're special no matter what. Alan's not a fan. Yep, that's me. Disney Plus Tree. What's your rating? Four. I was gonna say three. It's fine. Is that cobalt blue? My mom would like Your it because it's love cobalt it. blue. And I, you know, and I always applaud people for a shameless plug for their own, you know, their own products. Speaking of, if you signed up for our Patreon, um, but you know, it's it's less imaginative than other trees. Taking a slight tree break to go into days of Christmas. This is the year round Christmas shop because we put a new ornament on our tree every year that has the year and we don't have one yet for 2022. So we got to find one. All right. What kind of ornament are we going to get? Honestly, are we going to get this one? Are we going to get the popcorn bucket? It's so cute. I actually don't hate it. All right. That's an option. Whoop. Don't Clang, clang around. Is that a watch? That's a watch. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. Okay, I like the ornament because it says Disney. Like it's got the Disneyland D on it and it, these are the old school Disneyland popcorn buckets that they actually still have in Disneyland. They brought them back. Let's see, but we like to get a dated one. And you can get them personalized. You can um, pay extra or the, on these trees, they have ones that have already been personalized. So like this Minnie Mouse right here, they just went ahead and added the 2022 on there. Um, that way it's a little bit faster because especially days like today, a weekend day around the holidays, the line to get things personalized, the wait can end up being really long. So I love that they kind of pre-do some with the year uh, so that you might not have to wait as much. Alan, look, Alan, look. I'm looking. 
They have a popcorn with the date already. All right, well, I think that, that decides it then. Okay, we can still look around, but we're gonna hold on to this one. And it's not just ornaments that they can personalize. You can see here, they've got a cookie jar and they've written a date and the uh, the name on it right there. They can also do things like the plain pleather Mickey ears they can personalize. They can personalize buttons and it's just a few dollar upcharge. It's a really fun way to make a custom souvenir that no one else will have. What's wrong? Look at his face. Can we just pause for a moment on the beautiful point he has going on? I think he's going, yes! Some of my favorite ornaments every year are that same series that Gaston is in, which are the sketchbooks, and they take scenes from favorite Disney and Pixar movies, and they bring them to life, and they either like light up or they sing, like, look at the cute Dalmatian one. I feel like there's not a Duff Dalmatian love. There's Scar, Soul, this cute Toy Story one with Woody and Buzz. There's this Toy Story one that you hate. Anyway, there's this cute one of the aliens. Look, Atlantis, Alan. No, Treasure Planet, Alan. I'm sorry. Did you just say that was Atlantis? Oh, I'm sorry. Did I mix up the two equally bad Disney films from the early 2000s? Oh, no, you didn't. Here's a moment everyone wants to hang on the tree. The moment that an evil villain, essentially the devil, takes a baby. You know, I love the Hercules representation, but this, this is what we went with? Are you more or less concerned about this one, an alien stealing a child? No, this is a family scene. They're, they're, they're having a moment That's together. That's the one that tries to steal them. No, she's the, she's she's the galactic charge, leader. But she tells the people to come get them. And then she changes her mind when she sees how much Stitch has grown. Okay. Alan's been distracted. Yeah, we're going to own this. It's from Silly Symphonies, and the short was called Skeleton Dance, and it was a pioneer in new animation technology. Silly Symphonies, oh my, yeah, there's a ton. There's a whole line of Silly Symphonies, which is awesome that they're... Take my money. There's a, they had it out at Halloween. There's cool shirts and stuff, too, but Silly Symphonies was a revolutionary technology and revolutionary shorts that they made and what's very interesting is that they were halfway through them they had already invested thousands and thousands of dollars and then color technology came out and Walt Disney said scrap the whole thing and redo it in color and Roy Disney Walt's brother was like I'm sorry what um, now? Excuse me? <laughs> he was in charge of the books and he's like Walt no um, but it ended up getting them Academy Awards and making them a lot of money and and breaking the mold and and uh, all kinds of stuff so I love that they've got some of these Disney history nods in the merchandise these days. So what are we buying? All of it. What did you do? I found another ornament. I wanted to see if they had a dated one. It's got the dwarves on this side. And on this side, it's got Snow White and it says, make your wishes come true. And I thought that was perfect for this year. Back on the tree trail, found the annual pass holder tree. I give this a five jingle bells. I'm also giving it five jingle bells. Cute, well, but not that good. Yeah, the only cool part about, well, not the only cool part, but the best part about it is the monorail. Yeah, five for the monorail. Uh huh. Frozen tree. I give this one a six. I'm giving it a 6.5 for the carrots for Sven. That's fair. Lion King tree, what's your rating? 10. I guess it's a nine. It's beautiful, and look at baby Simba up at the top. Oh, that is cute. I just think this entire decoration scheme is beautiful. Uh, this is the wish bush. Do you know what my Christmas wish is? What? To go on the Disney wish next year. I think that's a possibility. Okay, wish bush, what's your rating? I'm giving it a 10 because I'm manifesting a cruise. You're manifesting? I'm manifesting a cruise. I give it a eight because it's not a tree. Sure. But it's still beautiful. Riot tree, what is your rating? 10. 
I give this one an eight. It's not the best tree, but I'm gonna give props to any Raya and the Last Dragon appearance in the parks. An underrated, incredible film. Black Panther Tree, what's your rating? 1,000. Honestly, the most accurate rating we've heard all day. It has a panther coming out of it. It's very well done. And Wakanda at the top as the topper? Plus down here, the where they do the ceremonial fighting. I agree, 1,000. 1,000. It's over 9,000. Star Wars Tree, what is your rating, Molly? You know what? Not my favorite franchise compared to some of these others, but I'm giving it an eight. I really like the helmets. I really like the little uh, Jabberwockies creatures in there. Jawas? Yep. And I really like that they're reusing merchandise from Droid Depot at the top as the topper. <laughs> I give this an eight as well. Also, the Jawas eyes light up. That's really cool. The Jabberwockies. You know what? Sure. They dance. And last but not least, the princess and the frog tree. What is your rating, Molly? I'm going to give it a seven. I don't think it's the best tree we've seen. I like the colors. I like the little hidden frogs, but it's leaving some to be desired. It's an eight for me. Very pretty. We did it. We did do it. We did the thing. <laughs> Wow, that shocked me more than I think it should have. You are very enthusiastic about our butt. I love all prizes. We did win. We did win. We got our steps in. And a button. And, and a button. delicious holiday eats and drinks at Jack Lindsay's. So it was a lovely day. It was a great day. Thank you for joining us on this very relaxing holiday edition of uh, Mammoth Club. To you and yours, whatever the holiday season looks like for you, I hope it's been very merry and very magical. Make sure to take some time for yourself. This time of year can be very stressful for people, so treat yourself and do something good for you as well as those you love. Be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and be sure to follow us on all of our socials. It's at Mammoth Club or at Mammoth underscore club. We appreciate you. Until next time, friends, I'm Molly. And I'm Alan. And it's been so merry and magical. If you want more holiday fun, watch our Coast to Coast Christmas Challenge. Oh yeah, do that. Bye. Bye.